there you are, Vestige. We must speak at once. Listen well. I have located a safe harbor from which we might plan our course of action. You must meet me there. I awoke upon a sandy shore, a stretch of beach, outside a bustling city of elves, Vokel Guard. The harborage is in a seaside cave outside the city. It is there that you will find me. There we go. Harborage solo. I know that's not a uh, dungeon, but okay. Solo instance, I guess. Talk to the Prophet. Here I you are, Prophet. Thoughts. Come closer, Vestige. Welcome to the Harborage, Vestige. This is as comfortable a home as an old dried up husk like myself could hope for. <laughs> Despite my blindness, nay, because of it, my other senses seem to have heightened. This place had the right smell about it. Indeed, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. Without an understanding of where we are bound, every road will get us nowhere. Before we truly understand our destination, we must speak of the past, of a sort. I invite you to enter my mind and walk with me through visions of the past, that you might understand the events that brought us to this time, this moment. Enter okay. my mind, Vestige, and walk with me through the shadows of past events. Let's see, this is going to be interesting. Follow me, Vestige, and learn of the events that precipitated our current crisis. Oh, I'm invisible. Nice. Invisible man. My part in the story began when I awoke on the steps of the Abbey of the Moth Priests, with no memory of my prior life. Moth priests took pity upon me and brought me into their fold. I was weak and near death. There, I first set eyes upon the Elder Scrolls and devoted my life to their study. Nice scroll. Give me my one read. The scrolls allowed me to glimpse the very fabric of reality. But then I would be blind to oh, UI error. That happens sometimes. The prophecies of the Elder Scrolls are a fluid living thing. They are not fixed. At many points throughout history, the actions of heroic mortals have rewritten them. I only know that you are important, Vestige. The scrolls reveal to me that your destiny is intertwined with that of the Five Companions. The Five Companions were a band of adventurers who sought out an ancient artifact called the Amulet of Kings. They hoped to use this artifact to persuade Akatosh, the Dragon God, to accept their leader as one of the Dragonborn. The Dragonborn are mortals destined for greatness, with the blood of the dragons in their veins. It is said only a true dragonborn can ignite the eternal dragon fires in the Imperial City. Am I the dragonborn in this game? I hope so, that would be sweet. Baron Aquilarius, the son of Calobian Duke, who led a rebellion against the Emperor Leovic and took the crown himself. Alas, Baron was not truly a dragonborn, as those who sit upon the ruby throne must be, in accordance with tradition. You have already heard enough babbling from this old blind fool. It is time you met the five companions yourself and witnessed their fate. The 
first companion, Lyris Titanborn, daughter of giants, was the mightiest warrior in the service of the Emperor. Next, Abner Tharn, a powerful sorcerer and Grand Chancellor to the Imperial Elder Council. The Red Guard Swordmaster. If you're invisible, uh, then how is the monkey following you? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, oh, there he is. That's a mystery for another time, I guess. Must be I smell bad and he can sense it. <laughs> were the five companions who set out from the imperial city on an epic quest to recover the lost amulet of kings. Many Marco convinced Varen that the amulet could be used to perform a ritual that would rekindle the dragon fires. He claimed this would please Akatosh. Now we are getting into some real storyline. Varen as one of the dragonborn. By tradition only the dragonborn can lay claim to the ruby throne and rule as the one true emperor by divine right. Baron conquered Cyrodiil maybe he took hears the throne, footsteps. Yeah, that maybe. Dragonborn, he feared he'd always be thought of as a pretender. Each of the five companions were chosen for their skill and courage, and each was given a special role to perform in the party. Who would you like to know? You've already met Lyris. She's a Nord warrior from the frozen lands of Skyrim to the north. And it is said that her family lineage contains the blood of giants. Baron chose her for her strength and her loyalty to be his personal bodyguard. Sai Sahan came from a long line of Red Guard Swordmaster nobles. He was the leader of the Dragon Guard, the security detail of Varen and the Elder Council. While Lyris was Varen's bodyguard, Sai was charged with protecting the entire group. The Thans are one of the most influential families in Cyrodiil. Abner, their patriarch, is the leader of the Elder Council, a powerful battle mage and a shrewd politician. With his council, Darren was able to seize the Imperial throne years before. Manamarco the traitor, the great enemy, the most powerful necromancer this world has ever known. His worm cult infiltrates and corrupts every corner of Tamriel. It was he who convinced Baron to perform the ritual you are about to witness. Disaster, war, and pestilence. A world brought to its knees. Now watch and see how one man's arrogance brought about the greatest threat our world has ever known. Okay, let's see. There it is. The dragon fire brazier. Manimarco, you certain this will work? It will work, my liege. The amulet of kings will rekindle the dragon fires and ensure your rightful place as emperor. You have my word. It better work, Manimarco. Or you'll find your neck at the business end of my axe. <laughs> my lord, I wonder if you'd muzzle your half-giant pet. She really is annoying. Enough, both of you. We are here to ensure my lord's rightful claim to the ruby throne. Abner, begin the ritual. I have a destiny to fulfill. By the lighting of the dragon fires, I claim my rightful lineage. By the fires of creation, let me be reborn. By the will of Akatosh, I proclaim myself Dragonborn! Baron Aquilarius, you are no heir to Alessia! You will pay for your sacrilege! The veil between Tamriel and Oblivion tears and splits asunder! What's happening? The sky's opening up! This is bad! This is very bad! This is interesting. What's the meaning of this? Mary Marco, what have you done? Gulliver fools! The veil between oblivion and this world has been torn. My master, Molag Bars, is free to claim Tamriel for his. 
his own. Akatosh, forgive me. Have mercy on our souls. Okay, nice. The ritual tore the veil between Nairn and Oblivion, allowing Menemarco to begin stealing the souls his master needed to power the Dark Anchors and initiate the Plane Mount. Akatosh gave Alessia the Amulet of Kings as a symbol of his covenant with Nairn. So long as the amulet remained in the care of Alessia's heirs and the dragon fires remained lit, Tamriel will be protected from the Daedra. Manamarco tricked Varen into breaking the covenant, and the veil between Oblivion and Nern was torn. The Elder Scrolls named this event the Soul Burst. It gave Molog Baal the opportunity to disconnect the souls of Nern from their hosts. Varen was lost. In the chaos of the moment, Sai Sahan took the Amulet of Kings and fled. Leris was captured by Menemarko and delivered to Cold Harbor, the realm of Molog Baal. Tharn remains Chancellor of the Elder Council, and his daughter Tribio rules as Empress Regent. But the true power remains in the hands of Menemarko and his worm cult. When I discovered the truth about the Five Companions, I made subtle inquiries, but apparently not subtle enough. Menemarko got word of my interests and abducted me. He took me to Cold Harbor, where I remained a prisoner until you freed me. The truth is always a threat to evil men. Manamarco feared I would reveal his treachery, and if knowledge of Nan's vulnerability were to become known, it could threaten his master's schemes. Molog Baal does not favor loose ends. Walk with me. Interesting, interesting. Long ago was written, so long as the amulet of kings was borne by Alessia's heirs, Tamriel would be protected from the forces of oblivion. But the soul burst tore the veil between worlds and gave Molog Baal the opportunity he desired. Molog Baal's dark anchors pierced the torn veil that seemed to draw near into the depths of Cold Harbor. These terrible engines of destruction That looks lovely. <laughs> if the Lord of Brutality and Domination is successful, he will merge our world and his own in a UFO. plane mill. Yeah. If he will survive the ordeal. Those that do will be enslaved for all eternity. And so it falls to us, Vistage. We must stop Molog Baal and his dark anchors, or our world is doomed. And now history seems to have caught up with us. Shall we return to the harborage? As you say. And so it begins. The remainder of the story has yet to be written. It is your story now. And there is so much to do. But know this, you will not walk this path alone. We must grow in strength and in numbers. You will need more than the company of an old blind man to alter the course of history. We must assemble our own group of companions. The first you have already met. Lyris sacrificed her own freedom to allow us to escape. She remains a prisoner in Cold Harbor. I must determine her precise location if we are to mount a rescue. That will take time. Minamarco's agents leave a web of lies and deceit. They pit the races of Tamriel against one another and divert their attention from the real threat. Seek out these agents, wherever they can be found, and expose their lies. Forgive me. Bringing you to my mind seems to have taken quite a toll on me. 
I must rest. I will contact you when the time is right. Until then, walk in the light, Bistridge. Okay, we get a ring and glyph, inferior glyph of health. Wait. <laughs> 